And welcome guys back to another video. Today, we're gonna be running through what classes you should take as a freshman at NYU Stern for the BS in Business program. Since I'm not in the BPE program, I'm not really gonna be going in depth about it, but I will be kind of mentioning it in the video if we have enough time. Let's get started with the video. So you just joined school, NYU Stern, congratulations, but Here's one thing that you need to consider. What classes should you take? Class registration can get actually a bit stressful and I experienced that firsthand. I had to plan everything for over a week, which I made a video on. It's about me and class registration for NYU Stern and how it's really stressful and you just have to speed things up really quickly. But I'm gonna be running through the classes that you can take as a freshman so that you don't really need to worry so much and you just, you don't need to do more research on it. And in fact, this video might be helpful because I ended up asking NYU Eastern and other sub schools a lot about these courses and subjects and classes and um, the answers I got were kind of inadequate but gathering from the answers I gathered and stuff I heard from other people I'm making this video for you. Let's get started with the video. So there are eight possibilities of classes that you can take as a freshman in NYU Stern. So let's start with the first one. First one you can take is the cohort leadership program, which is required in the fall. You can't take it in spring. It's always required in the fall. Everyone at Stern has to take it and it's zero credits, boo hoo. But it's not that bad because it's weekly. It's held on every Friday. It's only an hour, 15 minutes of your entire week. So what exactly is this? As this website says, it develops professional and leadership skills that set the foundation to achieve success as a business student. So it's like the basic, like a foundation. It's the core that you need to become a businessman or to study business in the future. And of course, the website does a clear, a much better job at explaining this. You will develop a greater self awareness, learn from different perspectives and engage dialogue around various topics and provide tools to be successful during your first year. Really, the cohort leadership program is pretty straightforward. I mean, everyone has to take it. You don't really get to evade it or avoid it. You don't really have a choice on it. It's held every Friday and it's like the foundation course for your four years of university life. So not much to say there. So let's just move on. The next thing that you have to take is a writing class and we're gonna be jumping in right there. So a writing class is required in the fall again, but this time it's four credits. There are four choices that you can choose from. First of all, the website states, all students are required to complete two writing focused courses in your first year, one in the fall and one in the spring. You'll register for your spring writing course later on. So what are the writing courses that you can choose from? There are four, as I mentioned. The first one is writing the essay or Expose UA1, that's the code. It's the most basic you can get. It's a basic writing class, pretty much the most straightforward thing that you can ask for. So I can't really explain much there. The next thing that you can take is commerce and culture, which there's only a one liner of description who can, should take this course any NYU Stern student can take it. Now I feel like this is a pretty bad job of explaining what the course is, considering that most NYU freshmen, or I should say NYU Stern freshmen, ends up taking this. From the people I've met, more people take commerce and culture than writing the essay. Why? Well, since we're studying business and stuff at NYU Stern, the name commerce and culture suggests that it is more leaned towards that general area than writing the essay would be. So of course, for all the people that I've met, uh, I've seen more people take or decide to take commerce and culture over writing the essay. So just to keep that in mind. The third choice that you can take is the International Writing Workshop 1, which is Expose UA4. I didn't really have to consider this, but the thing is about this. So who needs to take this? Some people need to take this course if your first language is not English. Like me, my first language isn't English. I might be really fluent in English, but the truth is my first language isn't English. It's actually Korean. English is my second language. So if you put that in the application, you're gonna get a survey to do for uh, through your NYU email. And uh, if you take that survey, which takes, how, did, how long did that take? I'm gonna say it took about an hour. It's gonna say in the email. So in that survey, you're gonna write some essays and stuff, write some answers to prompts and questions and stuff. And that survey is gonna determine which course you're recommended to take. Obviously you're not forced, but recommended. And for me, I took the survey, of course, and I got writing the essay, but Obviously, that's just to say you don't need to take international writing, which is why I went with commerce and culture instead, like the majority of students have talked to. And then the final choice, the fourth choice that you can take is writing one, although I feel like it is very exclusive as the website states that this course is only open to opportunity program students only. And considering that I don't even know what that program is yet, I feel like it's really exclusive and I'm not going to be talking about that in this video. And I feel like I really can because I know nothing about this program. You know how the website said that you have to take one in the fall and one in the spring? 
Well, I had some confusion with that. And no, you don't need to choose two of four over the year. The first four that I mentioned, the four courses that you can choose from, that only applies for fall. That doesn't go to spring. So if you say, oh, I'm gonna take commerce and culture for fall, that doesn't mean you choose writing the essay for spring. You have to choose a completely different one, in which case I heard it was social impact or whatever. So it's completely different. It's not even here. So when it says one in the fall and one in the spring, it doesn't mean two out of the four, which can get a bit confusing. I know it confused me definitely. It means choose one of four for the fall semester and choose a completely different set um, of writing class for spring. I was really confused in that. I actually emailed the school about it. I got a good answer. So telling you there. So that was it for the writing class. Moving on to calculus or a math class. And this depends on the proficiency as the website states. Four credits, again, like most NYU classes here. So when you click this, you see that you have to complete calculus one or a higher level math course to complete Stern's mathematics requirement, blah, blah, blah. All the prerequisite thing. Qualifying advanced standing exam scores include AP, you know, calculus BC, four or five, uh, IB, math, HL score of six or seven, which is pretty high because IB is much harder than AP, and the GCE A level, which I have no clue what it is, but a math score of A or B. In my case, I got uh, a five on BC, and as you can see here, AP calculus AB doesn't count. I got a four on that. But anyways, BC five trumps everything, so that's pretty much fine. Things that you can enroll in are down to this. You can take algebra and calculus which is Matthew A9. And um, if you don't qualify for Calculus 1, you have to take this course as the website states. Another choice that you can go for is Calculus 1, which might be a lot of people if you've done those prerequisites or those advanced placement exams. You can take Calculus 2 if you want to challenge yourself. And this is, you know, a bit higher. It's a bit more complicated, I guess, a bit more difficult than Calculus 1 would be. And, um, you know, if you're considering a concentration in statistics or actuarial science or major minor in math or any just sort of kind of a bit more math heavy subjects or fields then you got to take this course I guess well it's recommended you don't have to take it obviously or you can do calculus 3 and I've run into some people who said they're taking calculus 3 and people were like what calculus 3 really yeah some people do take that apparently it's very very hard by the name you know, it's, it's gonna be higher than Calculus 2 for sure. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really know much about Calculus and math because since I got waived, I didn't look into the math courses that much. So you're on your own for that. The next class you can take is Microeconomics, which is four credits. Now, unlike the math course, you can't wave out of this. Every student has to take it. So you can choose from two microeconomics classes. What's the difference between microeconomics with algebra and microeconomics with calculus? According to the website, it says that microeconomics with algebra is more essay-based, more qualitative, more writing heavy. It incorporates algebra as name suggests and graphical problems and a greater emphasis on economic intuitions. What about uh, micro with calculus? Micro with calculus, well, to join it, you have to have these scores, AP Calculus AB, the website flipped it over, of four or higher, which I got, an APBC score of four or higher, which I also got, and the IBHL math score of six or seven, which I didn't get, GCA level math score with ARB, which I also didn't get, or a satisfactory grade in calculus one. For my case, I qualify in the first two requirements, so, I'm pretty much good there. Microeconomics with calculus, I heard, is more math-based. Obviously, you have to incorporate calculus. It's more quantitative, more number-heavy. I asked the school about this, and they were like, you know, if you like writing, take algebra. If you like numbers, take calculus. And I feel like it wasn't really a good example or a good help. I wish I had someone to talk to earlier people who are already in Stern, but I couldn't really do that. But from what I can gather, don't ask the school about this. The school's not going to give you a clear answer. Really, they're going to say it all depends on you and your progress. In my case, I went with calculus because a lot of people that I met are going with micro with calculus. I don't know why, but they are. I guess the main difference that they're really emphasizing is not the difficulty, but more qualitative versus quantitative. And that's all I can say for micro. The next class that you can choose from is statistics. And uh, it can get a bit tricky from now on. So you can either choose the six credit statistics course or the four and two. What's the difference? If you decide to take the six credit, you have to take it in one semester. So it's a bit more intensive. You're learning the same concepts, the same overview of lessons, but you're cramming that into one semester. Or you can take the four and two. Now what the four and two means is that for the first semester, you take the four credit, in which case it's statistics for business control, stat UB1. And then after you complete the end of the first semester, you move on to the second semester uh, with 
regression and forecasting models set UV3. And as I said, um, the six credit one kind of combines all this and it has a giant course name. But in the second semester, if you go with the second choice, you have this regression and forecasting models with, uh, that's a two credit class. So you can choose. You wanna go intensive with six credits or you wanna go with a four and two, kind of divide it up over one year. Now, if you want to take a lot of classes, obviously I'd suggest the six credit one because you know you have more room in the second semester to kind of do whatever you want. On the other hand, if you know you struggle with math or statistics, I suggest you take the four and two because it's more lax, longer, you're learning the same concepts anyways, the end result's gonna be the same. It all just differs on how long you learn the concepts for. You know, if, is it a half year? Is it a full year? You get to decide on that. And of course, again, you can't waive this with an AP score or any other exam score. As you can see here, no qualifying test scores are needed because A, any person has to take it. But here's a catch. You can wave out of the four credit class. If you earned a four or five on your AP statistics exam, which I got, or a six or seven on the IAB math, HL exam, or an A or B on the A level math exam, you can waive yourself out of the four credit class, which means you automatically go into the two credit. What this means is that you don't actually earn the credits for the four credit class, you just waive it. You don't get those four points. You just say, oh, I'm not gonna take it. I'm just gonna skip right to the two. In my case, even though I had a qualifying statistics score, I just decided to go with the six credit because yes, it is a bit more intensive. It might be harder and it's 8 a.m. in the morning for me, despite with a good professor, apparently, according to rate my professors. But, you know, even though it might be hard, might be difficult, I feel like not waving out of this uh, with a diagnostic test, by the way, kind of a placement test, not waving out of this might uh, allow me to learn, relearn these concepts again because I took statistics in junior year. And obviously my memory is not strong enough to remember every single detail from statistics. And who knows, university statistics might be a bit different and it might be worth learning. So I went with a six credit, but six or four and two, that's really up to you. Next course you can take is either text and ideas or cultures and context or global cultures, which is confusing at first glance and it's four credits. What this is, it's that text and ideas is, I think it's a bit more philosophical. Like I saw the topic list and it was all about like enlightenment or the Renaissance, or it's a bit history. Cultures and context or global cultures, as the name suggests, culture heavy. Cultures and context, it's a bit specific to certain regions like Spain or Italy or India or just whatever like that. Global cultures is more of a general region. So this semester I'm taking African global cultures. So Africa, big part. There's other things like East Asia, Middle Asia, Latin America. So that's the difference between cultures and context and global cultures. But what does this mean? Text and ideas or cultures and context for global cultures. You have to take both of them, not in the first year, but sometime in your four years. And uh, most people do take either one of this in fall semester. More people do go with cultures and context or global cultures. And I've personally seen more global cultures than cultures and context, but they take this in their first semester, first fall semester, and they take text and ideas later on because apparently it's hard, it's hard to get a grade. And uh, since freshman year is kind of like your most important year and you need to get settled into everything, you don't really wanna stress yourself out with texts and ideas. So I'm seeing people who say, oh, I'm gonna take it in junior year or maybe sophomore year. Um, that's kind of what my plan is. Another thing to point out is that you can't take text and ideas while also taking um, either global cultures or cultures and context. Vice versa, you can't take cultures and context or global cultures while taking text and ideas. You have to take it separately. You can't take it in the first semester or the same semester, I should say. And yeah, as well as I suggest, you can't wave out of this because you can't substitute those requirements with a test grade. But that's pretty much it for this. One semester, you choose text and ideas. And for the other semester, you either choose cultures and context or global cultures. The next one that you should take is the natural science with the four credits. You can take physical science or life science or any biology, chemistry, or physics course, environmental science, anthropology, or psychology, I actually never seen through this because I waved out of mine. I took three AP sciences, excluding comp sci, because that's kind of math related. Got a five on AP physics one, a five on AP physics C mechanics, and a four, unfortunate four, on AP chemistry. So I had, I had a ton of credits for sciences, which is why I was able to wave it out, but I mean, it doesn't seem like there was much explanation here anyways. And finally, you can take the electives. I've seen some people uh, take electives or decide to take electives. For me, I have no room to take electives. I need to, you know, dive into the core subjects first and then take electives later on when I have time. But since electives aren't the most important for me, didn't really consider anything. But people are taking uh, a lot of things, like certain kids are taking like intro to programming or interviewing strategies or just whatever, like the most creative, uh, elective course that you can think of. It does have to be outside of Stern. 
You need at least 20 credits of coursework outside of CERN, which means electives over the four years of pursuing your degree, which means you can choose from CAS, Steinhardt, Tisch, Wagner, uh, Galton, anything, literally, literally just anything. So if you're saying, oh, I'm interested in the arts, I really want to take an, an arts elective, then you can go, go to Tisch School of the Arts. If you want to go to engineering, I guess you can go to Tanzan, which is in Brooklyn. And that's about it for the BS in business program. For the BS in BPE or business and political economy, well, cohort leadership program is the same. What, what is different is that you need to take intro to economic and political thoughts, I guess because of the PE parts. Calculus, that's the same. Micro is the same. Statistics, that's also the same uh and then you need to take foreign language that is kind of crazy i actually did not know that was part of it foreign language i guess if i went with that i would take well grade wise i could take korean but for familiarity i could take chinese if i wanted to venture out more i could take spanish or french because i've lived in canada there's slight differences between the bs and bpe but there's the general idea for the courses that you can take as a freshman in the NYU Stern. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If this has helped you anyway, uh, I suggest that you like this video so that I can see how many people I've helped out with this video, uh, with this kind of a tips and tricks video on how you can schedule your classes. I should kind of make another video for that, you know, actually focused on scheduling, not just the courses and classes that you can take. Maybe that's a future video, but if you have enjoyed, I suggest that you subscribe to my channel because more videos like this are coming in the future. More NYU Stern related, NYU related, uh, uh, NYC related, just general New York. So look forward to it because a lot of videos are gonna come in the future because we're gonna go to NYU, baby. Even though there's a huge pandemic, we're gonna be going. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.